Hey everybody, in this video we are talking about the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris and specifically the incredible athletes that are competing there mm -hmm. on behalf of Team USA. USA! USA! Okay, so did you ever consider how our elite athletes are able to afford right. all this training and traveling and competing year-round? For the sport they love? <laughs> yes, for that one. <laughs> It's an interesting story of tremendous sacrifice for these athletes, okay? They sacrifice physically, mentally, spiritually, and they're sacrificing right. financially for the sport that they love. Right, it's true. So we want to unpack this a little bit today and give you an inside, behind-the-scenes scoop on how they're getting paid and uh, why they're doing this. That's right. So huddle up, team. We are John and Tara Thorman, your financial success coaches. We help entrepreneurs and influencers, business owners, and self-employed professionals to achieve financial freedom faster so they can enjoy it longer. So the financial struggle is real, okay? It is enormous for so many of our best top elite athletes right. because they're young amateurs, right? A lot of them are um, they're in school still. Maybe they're in college and they're competing. So the financial burden really is on their parents. Right. Uh, but then as they get out of college, now it's on them and their spouse or their partners and they got to figure out how they're going to afford this passionate sport endeavor of theirs mm -hmm. and here's the thing right if you're training full-time and traveling and competing it makes it difficult to hold down a full-time job so these guys are they're hustling they're grinding they're you know scratching and fighting finding a ways to make money so these athletes have got to be creative, right? They got to work multiple jobs many times and do everything they can to make the money to make their Olympic dreams come true. Many are going deep into credit card debt to make it happen. Now, some countries pay their elite athletes to train and compete, and others pay out enormous cash bonuses if they medal at an Olympics. But in general, America does not do this for our athletes. At this Olympics, an American athlete that wins a gold medal, the United States will pay them $37,500. Crazy. Not a lot of money if you're doing that once every four years, right? Uh, a silver medal will get you $22,500 and a bronze medal will get you $15,000. Now the USA is not number one in paying out bonus money for uh, athletes that medal at the Olympics, okay? They're not even freaking close. Right. So check this out, it'll blow your mind. Hong Kong is number one. They pay out uh, a whopping $768,000 for a gold medal. Silver will get you 384,000, bronze 192,000. And it looks to me like they got two gold and two bronze already. So they're actually gonna you know, have to mm -hmm. pony up some loot. Singapore is number two. Right behind Hong Kong, they pay 745,000 for a gold. 373,000 for silver and bronze, 186,000. I'm not sure they're gonna have to pay up on any of that at this juncture. But far cry from the United States, right? I mean, that's like 20 times the, the payouts. Mm -hmm. But the trick is you gotta get to the Olympics first to even have a shot at winning a medal, right? Before you're gonna get paid. Now, according to um, this new report, it's called Passing the Torch, uh, it came out in 2024. It says that 26.5% of high-performance American athletes earn less than $15,000 a year. Well, well, what? Yep, you heard it. And another 10% earn between fifteen dollars and $25,000. So if you add that up, we got 36.5% of our elite Olympic athletes making under $25,000 a year. You can't function on that. Right. The commission found that the net cost to these athletes on average to participate in the highest levels of our Olympic and Paralympic sports pipeline and pursue their international competition is $12,000 a year. That means our top athletes really are paying for the privilege of competing under the United States banner. As a result, most of our high performing athletes are struggling and they're living off of a combination of a stipend, prize money, mostly support from family or partners, and wages from whatever part-time work or full-time jobs um, that they can do while they're training. It's reported that only 50% of these top-tier athletes 
earned any compensation related to their sport. Can you imagine? And only 11.5% of that 50 receive sponsorships. That means less than 6% of all of our top performing athletes are earning any kind of sponsorship money. And guys, that's where all the big money is made, as we will show you here in a few minutes. So don't miss this. It'll blow your mind. Now, in Paris for the 2024 Olympic Games, Team USA is the largest team there with 592 athletes out of 10,500 from around the world. But the 592 who made the Olympic team, man, they just represent a fraction, right? Think of the thousands of American athletes that competed at Olympic trials, that competed to try to get there and did it. Mm -hmm. For the special few that get to the Olympics, that doesn't automatically mean you'll be shown the money yet either. Who was it in Jerry Maguire? Show me the money! <laughs> Show me the money! Congratulations, you're still my agent. So the International Olympic Committee doesn't pay Olympic athletes a red cent to show up and compete at the Olympics. American athletes must pay to play. Each of them is responsible for raising their own funding one way or another. Our American Olympic heroes don't get paid to train or compete for years in between Olympic Games either. That's why it's so financially difficult for them. And this is not the same around the world. Some countries do pay their athletes, but that's not the case here in America. Now, what is interesting is that we used to think of the Olympic Games as purely for amateurs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, not anymore. Right. They changed the rules. And um, in before 1986, that was the case. But in 1986, they changed the rules to allow professional athletes to compete. So that changed the game, right? So you got, you know... Uh, like LeBron James does not have to worry about covering his cost to go play yeah. basketball for the Olympics. <laughs> right? He's good. He's got it covered. Yeah. Um, the uh, sport of kings, right? All the equestrian related sports, those jokers have already got tons of money and make big money on the circuit. So they don't have to worry about competing overseas either. But it's all the other sports um, that the athletes are struggling. So how do our national sports heroes do it? Well, like the rest of us, they take work where they can find it, right? They do side hustles. They start home-based businesses. They do work from home gigs. They're turning into social media influencers right. and talking about the things that they love and finding ways to build an audience that they can monetize. Fortunately, it's easier now than ever to make that happen. So the economics for these athletes is improving because the opportunity is so easily available. Fueled by passion of the sport, these Olympic athletes go on undeterred, right? They struggle, but they find a way to get through it because they know if they can medal at the Olympics, that they've got an opportunity for a huge payday. Sponsorships are where all the big money is at. And sponsorships go to the most popular, uh, the most meddled, you know, uh, competitors at the Olympics. Right. So take American gymnast Simone Biles. As a current example, her 10 Olympic medals and 30 world championship medals make her the most decorated gymnast in history. It's unbelievable. It's mind boggling. Simone Biles up next here on vault in the final. She's widely considered the greatest gymnast of all time. Well, you could imagine her dominance uh, in that sport gives her an opportunity to parlay that into a whole bunch of sponsorships. Right. Um, she reportedly earned $7.1 million in 2023 as a result. The 0.1 was what she actually earned from the sport, right? $100,000. Mm -hmm. The $7 million came from all her multiple okay. sponsorship deals. Today, her estimated net worth is now sitting around $25 million. That's pretty amazing for a 27-year-old athlete, right? Big payday for Simone Biles, and more is coming with her dominance at this year's Olympics for sure. So also, let's take a look at Katie Ledecky. She is the most decorated female Olympic swimmer of all time, and she's crushing it this year at the Olympics. Reportedly, just one of her sponsorship deals is a multi-year contract that pays her a million dollars a year. Plus, you know, some pocket change of hundred or $200,000 in prize money and all that kind of stuff. Her sponsorship deals are surely going to increase as a result of her performance this year, and um, she's set to make a whole pile of money. 
But right now, her estimated net worth, according to CelebrityNetWorth.com, is already at $5 million. And again, it's another 27-year-old athlete that's cashing in mm -hmm. on her going for gold. As an outstanding Olympic athlete, the sponsorship deals you can get will set you up for life. But you're not done earning. Mm -hmm. Retired Olympians can transition into other very lucrative careers that offer them impact and influence as well. Some of these are continued endorsement deals that go on for years, but also includes careers as sports commentators, um, entrepreneurial ventures, coaching, modeling, professional athletes, actors, authors, motivational speakers. I mean, the list goes on. But once you've made a name for yourself as an Olympic athlete and have medals, man, the opportunities are endless. You can really turn that into a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Olympic athletes have a unique opportunity to build an audience, create a huge fan base, and then find multiple ways to monetize it. When I was researching for this video, there was examples of uh, Olympic athletes that went that went as a backup and didn't even mm -hmm. compete. And uh, I forget her name right now. It was a blonde, I think a German runner, and she had like 1.4 million followers on Instagram wow. as an example. And she didn't even compete or medal at that Olympics, but it turned out good for her. But that's just the example of what we can do with social media today. Going for the gold has enormous financial payoffs for those that actually do medal at the Olympics. For those that don't medal, they can go again. They can try again at another Olympics. But if done right, regardless if you medal or not, it's a platform. It gives you an opportunity to build an audience and to still win. They get the opportunity to develop and grow as an individual, as an athlete, but they also get to follow their passion and find a way to make it profitable for them, whether they medal or not. It's about what this channel is about. It's about being entrepreneurial, about building a business and finding a way to monetize what you love and what you're good at. Mm -hmm. All it takes for these Olympic athletes, whether they medal or not, really is a little entrepreneurial spirit to match their Olympic drive and determination. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is so fun. I hope you're watching some of the Olympics and uh, you've got, you know, some favorites that you're watching. Um, I know I do. I mean, I love I love watching Simone Biles and, and uh, Katie Ledecky be so dominant in their sport. I just think it's awesome. And, and it's a great translation and encouragement and inspiration for us as business owners and entrepreneurs to find a way to play bigger, right? And to grow bigger and to do more and to have more impact. So uh, I just love it. Guys, if you find this content that we create every week valuable, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video and comment and let us know what you think about it and give us some ideas maybe for some further content down the road. But um, thanks for watching, and we will see you next week. Good show, hon.